This newscast is presented by Panera Bread. Food as it should be. Live from our home studios in Lewis Center, during this time of national shutdown, this is the Juice Remote. With your Tuesday news crew. Thanks for making us your school-wide news source. Your orange juice starts right now. Hi Pioneers, today is May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo, I'm Abby Ryan. And I'm Ashley Graham and this is your orange juice. Seniors, this year has been a change from the normal festivities, so here's Abby Fulton with some more insight. Hello and welcome to the fourth video out of five covering how different groups have been impacted by all of the Ohio schools closing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we are hearing from the class of 2020 regarding how the current climate is impacting them. With the challenges that this unique situation has brought, many seniors have found comfort from their teachers and peers. Senior Alina Mendoza said, quote, some of my teachers have been reassuring and telling us that everything is going to be okay and that we are all getting through this together and i believe that and it does give me reassurance that i need i just hope this isn't going to be permanent for the rest of the school year end quote though the situation has been extremely tough senior emily brace brings up some positives that it has brought for her personally quote i've become more independent i've had time to pick up new hobbies like baking and yoga. I've grown closer to my family and developed deeper friendships with my classmates because we are all going through the same thing. However, I definitely miss my teachers and friends and freedom, and I would definitely take a normal school day over this any day." End quote. For many seniors, this has been very difficult, seeing that their senior year could be cut off early, and is also a wake-up call. Mendoza said, quote, being out of school, especially under these kinds of circumstances, seems surreal. It doesn't feel too abnormal, but it definitely put some things into perspective. I remember receiving the march towards graduation and how riveting it was to know that we were going to graduate that following May. But now, seeing only half of the things have been checked off that list, it sucks thinking that it could be taken away from us and how we probably can't do the same things that the past graduating classes have gotten to do to commemorate their accomplishments as a high school senior. I have been in school for the past 13 years, like everyone else has, and the class of 2020 deserves to have the same treatment." End quote. Brace feels similarly to how Mendoza does, saying it's been difficult to comprehend. Quote, this experience has honestly been one of the hardest of my life. Knowing I only had a few months being surrounded by the or by the community I have at Orange and that now it's more than likely all over is something that's incredibly difficult to process, end quote. Brace offers some advice for her peers at Orange. Quote, this experience isn't easy for anyone in any grade, but the seniors are definitely mourning because they don't get the chance to have another year at Orange. Other grades need to remember to enjoy the moments, especially the ones we all take for granted, like seeing your friends in the hall every day before fourth period. I know many of us seniors would give anything to have another normal day at Orange, end quote. It's difficult to imagine how the seniors are feeling in this situation, so please be considerate and please reach out to a senior if you have a friend who is a senior. It's important for our community to come together to support the seniors the best we can through this pandemic. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune into the last episode of the series where we talk to the teachers and how this is impacting them. Thanks, Abby. Now to Ethan Hunter for this week's news report. Thanks, guys. Recently, the world's largest hornet, also known as the murder hornet, has been discovered in the United States for the first time ever. The two-inch Asian hornet was found in Washington state, and scientists still don't know how it got there. Although its sting can be lethal to humans, Experts worry that the infestation could be devastating to the bee population. Washington State University entomologist Todd Murray stated, It's a shockingly large hornet. It's a health hazard, and more importantly, a significant predator of honeybees. Honeybees are important in the pollination of many flowers and plants, contributing to the growth of American ecosystems across the states. 
As the murder hornet is a known predator of the bee, it is imperative something be done before bees are overhunted by the murder hornet. I sure hope it stays away from Ohio. I know I don't want to see one of those in my garden. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ethan. As many of you guys know, masks, gloves, and other surgical wear is scarce since the pandemic has started. Here's Abby with some more insight. Hello, and welcome to the fifth and final video covering how different groups of people have been impacted by the closing of the Ohio schools due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we are hearing about how teachers are being impacted and how their teaching is changing. Since students and teachers cannot meet face-to-face, -face, many teachers are setting up meetings on Microsoft Teams or Schoology with their students, along with allowing their students to set up individual conferences with them. Many teachers are also making videos for their students to watch for instruction. AP Seminar and CP9 teacher Rachel Hecker said, quote, being out of school has impacted how I teach in so many ways. The value of face-to-face -face instruction is unparalleled. I have found myself creating videos to support learning and distance this gap. These videos range from modeling the work to walking through rubrics and presentations to sharing how my cats are coping with having me home all day. I find it harder to manage the social emotional needs of my students when I cannot check in with them daily and monitor their behavioral health. I'm still trying to come up with creative ways to address this change, end quote. With all the changes in learning being made, instruction for AP classes and AP tests are a large concern for many. This being said, many teachers believe that College Board is doing a great job considering the situation. Hecker said, quote, I think College Board is handling our new circumstances very well. They are creating free distance learning tools for the AP community, have adjusted AP exams to online facilitation, and made cuts to testing content, and have extended due date. While I know some students may be frustrated about the work that they already completed that is now no longer a requirement for assessment on the AP exam, it is important to remember that AP classes are global, end quote. This situation has been diff difficult for everyone all over. We are incredibly lucky to live in such a great community that cares so much and wants to help everyone. Hecker said, quote, I have been moved and proud of how my district has been handling this unprecedented health crisis. While I may feel disconnected from my coworkers and students, what keeps me going is the knowledge that we are all in this together. We are one Olin Tangy. While much has changed about how I teach, nothing has changed in regard to how much I admire the courage and spirit of my school and district, end quote. Like I said before, this situation has been confusing and difficult, so it's extremely important to be considerate of those around you and how they are dealing with this. Thank you so much for watching, and it has been a pleasure to provide insight on how the current climate is impacting different groups within our community. Make sure to follow WPLP on the free Mixler app. It's running through quarantine. Now, here's your pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.